There has been the most successful part of public health programs in the world, and that is vaccination. You know, we have succeeded to eradicate many communicable diseases in the West, mainly. However, lately, we are seeing that some of them are returning. Uh, they are actually returning into some of the most developed countries in Europe. For example, Norway has been uh, uh, obvious in, in, in that respect. The UK is uh, coming on the map. And the reason for that is that people are not prepared to vaccinate their children against communicable, communicable diseases anymore. There is a growing opposition against enforceable vaccination of children all across Europe. So in several countries, uh, vaccination is already uh, uh, voluntary. And also Slovenia is exploring that option. And this is where we came in. Uh, our Ministry of Health was actually interested in what would happen if they would make a change from uh, obligatory to volunteer uh, 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 vaccination of children against communicable diseases. So we were asked, we are scientists, uh, researchers from the uh, Faculty of Social Sciences at the University of Ljubljana, together with epidemiologists from the National uh, Public Health Institute, together to study the situation. So before government starts making any changes, let's let, let give them some idea what could happen. And in this respect, we were asked basically to figure out how to differentiate between the opponents and proponents of uh, child uh, vaccination and what kind of communication programs could be implemented to, re to, to preserve the high level of vaccination of children as we have it now, if situation uh, changes. Now, so we have skeptics and opponents, people who are not happy with vaccination of their children. They already exist, although we have obligatory system. Now, the underlying assumption we have in all public communication programs all around the world is that there is a kind of cognitive deficit model that People, if we have to make public communication programs because we have to inform, because we have to educate people. So everybody believes that if we explain to people why vaccination is important and what are public benefits and also individual uh, benefits on the individual level, we will be able to preserve the high level because people are intelligent. So they are prepared to inform themselves. And if only they understand it, they will do it. So that's the underlying assumption. And if you look at majority of public communication programs, you know, even a lot of public relations theories are based on this assumption. And that's also how public officials operate. They, have the, they cannot operate on the different assumption because you cannot say our citizens are idiots. So we have to find a way how to persuade them against their intelligence. No, we have to approach them as intelligent human beings, so we have to educate it. This is how we started. Uh, we got money to do a, a proper research. We looked at literature. As I already mentioned, in health communication, the basic model assumes that information and, and education will change human uh, behavior in a way that they will take appropriate health decisions. So when we are thinking about communication, it's basically to find out with whom we have to communicate, so who our targets are going to be, and what their deficits are, and how we can reach them, and what kind of information do we have to install to build the block of their knowledge. So it's mainly about you know, figuring out who are our, how do you segment uh, your populations, what kind of publics you get there, or markets, or however you want to understand that, what kind of media you have to find to get there, and what kind of messages do we need. If you figure all of that, it should work. That's the underlying assumption. For that reason, we have, in this part in, in which I'm reporting today, there is many other things we are doing, we have formatted very simple hypothesis, which says, skeptics and oppon opponents to vaccination of communicable diseases are less educated and less health literate as compared to overall population. 
So we are looking for our prime target here, if you like. So our target is problematic because it lacks knowledge. Okay, so we are looking for that. We are looking for them. We have done a really probability sampling uh, survey. There is a perinatal information system in Slovenia, which means that all newborns are in computer. So we machistically decided that we are going to go after mothers because it's very easy to identify mothers. It's not so easy to identify fathers. So it's so we took the. So you have the whole population of children that were born in Slovenia. So we found out there are 3,854 mothers for which we could find addresses. There were slightly more, but some people, we knew they are there, but we couldn't find them. So we have this population and we mailed all of them. So we mailed the whole population and uh, they had an option to either uh, either respond uh, by on, on paper, so they had mailed questionnaire, or they could go to a website, they had a code, so they could do it via web. So, But basically, we approached all of that. We had a 40% response rate, which for that type of research is very nice. And we started our analysis on two questions and answers of the two questions. One is avoiding vaccination. If I only knew how to avoid compulsory vaccination, my child children wouldn't be vaccinated. And on the other side, volunteering for vaccination, if, even if vaccination weren't compulsory, my child children would be vaccinated. What we did is we found out that we can split two extremes on one side and on the other side. We have approximately 10% of opposers. We have half of them supporters, and we did all kinds of logical checks with other questions. So the two, the two groups were actually different on many lifestyle questions and that type of questions. So we, you really can see that we have uh, different groups with which uh, we are dealing with. What we found out is that actually people who are opposing vaccination are definitely not less educated they are not less informed. We didn't go so far as to say that they are more, or although there are several indicators who show for that. We are seeing that problem with rising or with uh, uh, appearing opposition to vaccination is definitely not coming from ignorance. It's coming from all other kinds of reasons. And we, when we are looking for possible explanations and in which directions we could go with our uh, research, we found two interesting uh, processes which are going in our society, which can bring, you, bring us to all other situations and contexts, including politics. One is, which one is, which is in the title of our paper, is the problem, problem, literally problem, of democratization of everything. There is Steve Fuller, uh, who wrote a paper on prot science, and the very idea of prot science is that as Protestantism was a democratic opposition against Catholic Church being the mediator between humans and the God. So we want to take that mediator out. So the whole spiritual life can be democratized and everybody can do it for himself or herself in whatever way he or she wants. The same thing is happening in science today. People hate all kinds of experts. And because of the internet, you know, all of us, we all believe we can know everything about everything. And e all of us have this experience. You have a certain medical condition. What you do the first thing? You go to the internet. And you look, look about it for yourself. When you go to the doctor's office, you already know a lot. And you are prepared to argue with, with the doctor. Because you are now the expert. And the same thing is happening now in all departments of our life. We feel that we are so knowledgeable about everything that we don't know any kind of experts anymore. Or at least we don't trust them anymore. 
And if you look what's happening, what happened in Brexit debate, what's happening in US presidential debate these days, you can see that hatred of all kinds of experts and all kinds of authorities, if you like, is becoming extremely strong emotional factor. So this is one thing which is happening. So we have this democratization of the feeling that knowledge is spread equally in our society. We all have our right for knowledge. So we don't care about those people saying that it's in public interest that we vaccinate our children. Because I read on the internet that it's dangerous. You know, there are all kinds of stories why it's dangerous. And we have all these nice feelings that we should all become authentic, close to nature, so we don't want any kind of interference of science or, you know, pharmaceutical industry inserting something into our children. So you have this type of democratization. And with that, you have another process which is going and which started as a joke, literally, but it's today becoming a serious type of research in agnotology. You have never heard about agnotology, but it's basically a study of strategic ignorance. <laughs> strategic ignorance in a sense that there are many people who are strategically working on making us ignorant. It started with studies on tobacco industry. You know, tobacco industry spend a lot of money paying for research showing that if not really helpful, uh, uh, healthy, at least smoking is not dangerous. Or at least there are no conclusive evidence that it's dangerous. It started there. It moved, for example, lately on, on the environment. You know, there is no conclusive evidence for global warming. You know, it's conspiracy. So we have all kinds of processes now which are entering into our society, which are really changing the whole notion of what public and what public argumentation means today in our societies. You know, all this talk about post-factual, post-truth, and post-everything society, it's something which is really happening as an undercurrent in our society, and it's not coming from a pure ignorance of less fortunate and less educated. It's actually coming from completely uh, different side. So here we are now rethinking the whole project because it's obvious for us that the, this idea that was originally funded, that we should develop a communication strategy, identify our targets, find the media, find the messages, is not going to work. They don't have problem with information. They already have too much information. So we have to figure out you know, how to change the whole way of working with the society as a whole and how to discuss, for example, public health issues. Now, how do we agree on what type of behavior is socially appropriate or not? <laughs>